Hi everyone, welcome back to the Tarok channel. So today we've got a brave new guitar to unbox. As you can see, this is a Harley Benton. This is the R457 multiscale, the brave new one that comes with a rusted maple neck and a flip flop, as they call it, blue chameleon high glass finish. So I've just reviewed a Cord X300 with a flip purple finish and I really thought it was the cheapest guitar with this type of finish. And I have received a Cord before this one was released because it was released just one week ago. So now this is the cheapest guitar with a flop, uh, with a flip flop finish, sorry. Uh, so let's see how it looks like. Here we go. Okay, here it is. Okay. Oh, I know. Well, let's see to the eyes of the camera. Okay, green, just like the court was. And if I turn it this way, you start seeing the purple color. Yeah, okay. That's nice. That's nice. It's pretty much the same finish as I had in the court, except that this time you have a matching headstock, which is really a very cool feature. All right, I love Hardy Benton when they try and protect the strings that have no brand, that are, uh, well, I don't know what brand uh, is making those um, cheap strings, but okay, pretty funny. All right, so this neck, rolled in maple, oh, it looks really cool, really cool. In general, a rusted maple neck helps improve the tuning stability, so we're gonna see uh, if this happens on this guitar. So you've got two subboard pickups uh, that have no brand, so I don't know who makes them. Oh, good grip on the, the pots, good grip on toggle, the blade as well. I do prefer the blades over the toggles when it comes to those affordable Harley Bentons, because generally when you have the toggle it moves on the other side as well, when the, the blade is, okay, better. Uh, that finish looks pretty fine, okay, nothing sharp, pretty good job, oh, scratchy as fuck, <laughs> come on. Okay, gotta do some polish job. Um, just one word about polishing the frets. It's really something very easy to do. There are several uh, ways to do it. Uh, the easiest one is to take some sandpaper, uh, 1000 sandpaper. Uh, you do protect the side of the frets, that's the wood which is under the fret, and you scratch on this way. You don't have to scratch a lot, you just have to do it carefully. It takes something like a quarter of an hour and at the end of the day you've got some good polished frets. You will not have the, the brightness if that, uh, you would have if it comes from a lithium, but it works and uh, really it's an easy, easy job to do. Uh, maybe I'll do a video to show you uh, how it works. Anyway. Uh, this guitar looks cool. You've got classic tuners, you've got a basswood body, uh, and this finish is really gorgeous, I must say. Right. So, now it's time to listen to how this thing sounds through the demo in the mix right now.
Okay, so what you've just heard is this Harley Benton R457 uh, rusted multi scale. And of course, we're going to talk about what you couldn't see or hear through the demo. But just before we go there, I would like to ask you to subscribe to this channel if it's not already done. Let's thumbs up, share my videos on socials. I wish I could achieve a goal, which is 5,000 subscribers. So please help me with your likes, your comments, and your sharings. And of course, if you order anything from my partner to man, this guitar, or anything else, please. Use my partner link that's going to be in the description down below. You've got to know that when you click my link, you are on the French page of Tomen. So, if you're not French, you have to change the language. You will do it by clicking on the French flag, then you choose your own language, and there you are. Now, if you want to make 100% sure that you are really on my partner page, you can use the second link in the video description. It's going to lead you to my list of highly recommended gear, which is going to imply this guitar. Uh, then you will see my banner, my logo and everything, so you are sure that you are really on my partner page. And if you want to order something that's not in my list, uh, well, it's going to work anyway. Okay, so thanks in advance for your help. Now back to this guitar. I'll start with the headstock. Um, I have said two weeks ago about the Court X300 that it was the cheapest guitar with a Carolian color, uh, but it was just before the release of this one. Uh, the Court was 477 euros, this one is 228 euros, 248 euros if you want the 8 strings multi scale uh, version of this guitar. So, uh, well, now this one is the cheapest and it comes with a matching headstock. And really, for the price, it's a very good surprise. As you can see, the color changes. Okay, if I take the guitar like this, it's violet, violin, something like that. And if you take it in front, well, you've got something that's uh, close to uh, British racing green, I would say, something like that. Okay, and matching headstock, uh, you've got those uh, tuners that are not bad. Uh, okay, you don't have the same uh, precision that if it was some Grover or some Goto, uh, but they're doing the job. You've got here an ABS uh, plastic nut that doesn't really help this guitar stay in tune. Uh, yeah, the tuning stability is not that bad, but uh, the guitar tends to, to move a little bit, especially on the, the B string. Have changed the strings because uh, 9 to 54 is just uh, not for me. Uh, so I have put some 10 to 59 the Dio uh, strings and uh, okay it suits it much better. Uh, okay the frets uh, nothing sharp here so very good point. They were absolutely not polished at all. So I have tried and do something but I didn't have a lot of time to do it. So, okay it's a bit better but uh, if I take the time with some good sandpaper, uh, I can do a much better job. It's not something very complicated to do, but it takes a bit of time, you know. Okay, um, the shape of the neck, very important for me. Uh, well, this one is still a C, something pretty modern, I would say. It's not that thick. Um, I guess it's something like 20 to 22 millimeters from the nut to the 12th fret. Uh, pretty comfortable. And yeah, the aesthetics. Well, yeah, this rusted maple is really great. And that's the reason why it's such pity that you have a stupid ABS plastic nut, because with this kind of rusted maple neck, uh, that really helps keeping the stability of the tuning very high. Well, you need a graphic nut or at least a graphite nut. And uh, I guess it wouldn't be a bit more expensive, but I would pay 10 or 15 more euros with a graphic nut with no problem. And I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one. Okay, so this neck is pretty comfortable. The excess, and that's one of the good points with this multi-scale, access to the 24 fret is really very easy, at least on the four uh, highest string. When you move uh, to the A string, it's complicated. Uh, moving to the, <laughs> the E and the low B, uh, well, with my rather short fingers, uh, it's really not something easy. But, okay, this access is really good if you want to shred with this guitar, and uh, so you can. Um, I'm gonna talk uh, about the playability a bit more than usual, because this is a multi-scale. Uh, I had myself questions about that, because 
Uh, I cannot remember having played middle scale for, for years, you know. The question is, can you hold your chords the same way as you would on a classic uh, scaled neck, you know? Um, if you look at this, the fret is angled like this, but you can still put your finger across here. Now, if you want to play all the strings, it does not sound that good, but if you want to go for some power chords, just like I did, well, you know, my finger is normal. It's not like this, because if it was, well, you know, it stretches your shoulder, your elbow, it's not really uncomfortable, but you can still use your classic chords like that, and it's gonna be no problem. Um, if you have watched uh, the demo I have played, uh, I have played some chords which are like this, Okay, these are some 5 and 9 chords. Uh, I'm using them a lot, I love this way, the way they sound. And, uh, you know, I can do it, even though this is a 27 uh, inches scale. It goes down to 25 and a half here, so I guess on the 5th string you are on something like 26, 26 and a half. Uh, but still, I can use this kind of chords. I couldn't use, oh, yeah, I could do it. Right there, okay. My fingers are not very long, so, uh, well, it's gonna be a point of comparison for you at home. Uh, if you're able to stretch your fingers enough to take this kind of course, so that's um, first uh, fret on the low B, third fret on the low E, and fifth fret on the A, okay, if you can do this kind of chords, well, you've got pretty much the same fingers as I do. If you are unable to, to reach the fifth fret on the A, when you've got your index here, on the first fret on the low B, uh, well, your fingers are shorter than mine, and maybe it's gonna be a problem. But okay, for me, uh, personally, um, no problem. I know that I would not feel comfortable with a 26 and a half inches scale uh, seven strings guitar. At least, um, last time I have played one, it was oh, four, five years ago, I had back then a uh, Schecter Demon 7. Um, I was really enjoying this guitar a lot, but I was not feeling comfortable with the 26 and a half, especially for shredding, because, you know, I like to do some shredding licks like this, some pentatonic licks um, that are across two different positions, first and second position if you are in E minor. And uh, when I was trying to play this on the 26 and a half, I was really not feeling very comfortable. And if I was trying to do it in D minor pentatonic, so it's like this, so 10, 13, 15, uh, it was impossible and I had to tap. And uh, I don't have anything against tapping, but sometimes I do prefer uh, you know, picking the, the strings uh, normally. Okay, um, with all that in mind, because <laughs> that's a lot to, do, to mention, but I think it's important if you decide to go for a multi-scale and you're not used to doing it, uh, you have got to know what to expect. Uh, yes, it's comfortable. Yes, you can play your chords normally. You've got to be a bit more careful than usual, but it's gonna work anyway. And yes, when you go for some shredding legs like this, uh, things are gonna change, you know, if I do this. It works, but I really feel that as I'm climbing uh, to the lowest strings, uh, I have to, to be careful because it's not what I'm used to doing. Uh, it's a bit angled, it's a bit wider here on the low E than on the high E, of course. Uh, but, okay, the difference is not that big, so you can manage playing that. It's interesting. Okay, enough talk about playability. <laughs> um, the rest of the guitar, when well, it's okay, uh, those sandals, um, well, I mean, it's comfortable, you can put your palm, okay? Setting the intonation up is very easy. Okay, we're gonna talk about the pickups after uh, playing the guitar alone, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do right now. So here we go for the guitar played alone, clean, dirty, unplugged, and uh, we're gonna check out how those spots and this three-way blade are working. Here we go.
Okay, so maybe if you buy this guitar, you will go on stage with it and show off a little bit. So let's see if it has a neck dive nut. And well, obviously, the answer is not. So that's nice. Okay, so as you have heard, those pickups are sounding pretty good. The only downside they have is they are really very noisy. Uh, I guess that's not only due to the pickups themselves, maybe that's due to the electronics, maybe that's due to the shielding. Uh, the shielding has been done, but I guess uh, it could be done a better way. Uh, okay. Now, if you want to change those pickups, you have some classic sub bars, so with a classic sub bar size. So you can go for some EMG Active, you can go for some Fishman Fluence. I guess you can find something interesting uh, if you want some active pickups. And this cavity is really very big, very wide. So you will have enough room to install a 9 volt battery. Okay, all in all, so, well, uh, this guitar plays nice, it sounds nice, and it looks really very cool, as you can see, again, I love to, to play with, you know, the different uh, color that it has, you know, okay, that's nice. Okay, really, 228 euros for this kind of guitar, uh, great, great. Um, I think the first thing you need to change if you buy one is this ABS plastic nut, go directly for some graphite nut, Graftech or something else, but I think Graftech is always a good choice. Um, the pickups, well, if you can solve the problem of the noise they make uh, with changing the electronics for some better components, well, it will be okay and maybe you will have an even better sound, I guess you will. Um, if you want to go for some other sub-bar pickups, well, that's a choice, but 228 euros, sorry, <laughs> that's a very interesting price for a very good basis for a mod project. But you can also decide to keep it as such, really just change the nut and I guess you will have something very interesting. So if you're interested in it, uh, you can really go for it right now. Uh, I guess it's just the first batch. I guess that when this first batch is entirely sold out, well, you will have to wait for several months before the second batch arrives. That's always what happens with Hardy Benton guitars. But so far, so good. This guitar is available. And uh, if you buy it on a B stock, you might have this one. So you will already have some 10 to 59 strings. Okay, well, I think I've said it all. Uh, next time, I'm gonna discover with you another Harley Benton 7-string multiscale and uh, maybe we're gonna compare this one with the next Harley Benton that's coming uh, next week or in two weeks. I don't know when I'm gonna find time to make video. Uh, the guitar is not yet here, so I cannot show it to you right now, but okay, so you already know what my next video is gonna be. Uh, so far, so good. Well, thanks for watching this one and so see you next time for another Harley Benton 7-string guitar.